ये महफिल जो आज सजी है इस महफिल में कोई हमसा हो तो सामने आए यस यू गेस्ट इट आई एम गोइंग टू बी टॉकिंग टू ताहिरा सैयद हु इज अनपैरल्ड इन हर ब्यूटी इन हर ग्रेस एंड मोस्ट ऑफ ऑल इन हर सिंगिंग आई एम द यंगेस्ट ऑफ सिक्स सिब्लिंग्स सो माय मदर वाज वेरी कीन दैट वन ऑफ अस शुड एट लीस्ट बिकम अ सिंगर और लर्न सिंगिंग your uh, son and daughter did obviously follow the the family legacy of law but did yeah. you ever feel the need to carry on the or pass on the singing tradition when i was a child it was painful as i said to rehearse and to sing and to learn so i did ask my children if they were interested and uh, they both said no we are not interested i was listening to one of your previous interviews and uh, one of the comments you made about you know pakistan itself was that y- at this point in time you would not encourage any of your children to go back and settle in pakistan it makes me sick to the core and i absolutely love my country uh, my whole life has been spent there as far as i can remember i have only heard that this is a very bad stage this is never happened before the poor are suffering a lot because uh, kind of inflation we have has literally never happened before i mean i go back from here after 5 or 6 months so five four months and the prices have doubled i cannot even imagine what food they can buy what are they eating because the basics like atta chini tel dale chawal are so highly priced that i don't think they can afford even one meal a day so i personally think the greatest charity would be to contribute to some place some charity organization that gives free food to the poor people assalamu alaikum and welcome to an extremely exciting episode of new wave global this is amina with new wave global in this current independence week of pakistan i wanted to bring some levity and hope to the dire straits which pakistan is currently in and i thought there would be no other way of doing that than talking to an iconic pakistani singer who is best described by her very own song ye mehfil jo aaj saji hai is mehfil mein koi humsa ho to samne aaye Yes, you guessed it. I'm going to be talking to Tahira Sayed, who is unparalleled in her beauty, in her grace, and most of all, in her singing and being a cultural representative of Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum Tahira. How are you? Assalamu alaikum. Kaisi hain aap? Main theek hu. Allah ka shukar hai and thank you so much. for agreeing to talk to me i know you were sick recently so i'm really extra grateful for this conversation which comes like Absolutely. i mentioned earlier at a very opportune time so i'm without further ado i'm going to talk a little bit about your journey in life your story um i know you come from a house of a legendary singer how was mm-hmm. it growing up and was it always an expectation to be a singer Uh no not at all uh I am the youngest of six siblings so my mother was very keen that one of us should at least become a singer or learn singing so she tried with all my siblings but none of them were able to follow her or agree to sing or agree to even learning तो जब मेरी बारी आई तो she was determined knowing that this was the last chance she would have <laughs> so she made sure that i learned and uh, then uh, when i had trained for a couple of years with a classical uh, music teacher uh, then she taught me ghazal and uh, her own uh, genre of music and uh, then i started appearing on television and she was very happy because she felt let down if none of her children had followed in her footsteps so that is how it happened Okay so uh um, going back to that is that something that you wanted to do too or is it something that a lot of our uh, us pakistani kids end up doing just to please our parents just to no, make no. Them happy I I did it completely to please my mother <laughs> and uh, if you're I honest <laughs> towards singing you must remember that you must remember at the time I started singing it was not considered suitable for girls from good families yeah. and good backgrounds to become singers 
So it was quite a struggle vis-a-vis -vis my family. But my mother was determined and uh, she carried on regardless. So it wasn't even the kind of environment we have now where young kids all want to be singers. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they want to follow in the footsteps of Atif Aslam, Ali Sethi, Ali Zafar. So we have these wonderful icons now of music. At that time, there was nobody. Especially right. in the younger generation, there were no younger singers. Uh, when I started singing on TV, uh, the ladies who were there already performing on TV were uh, Farida Khanam Sahiba and Iqbal Banu Sahiba. So the younger generation had no uh, identification with older, the older generation. Right. So when I came, I was it was quite a, a new thing for the youngsters to watch a person of their generation, a young girl appearing on television and singing uh, Desi music and uh, very uh, heavy classical kind of music. Right. So you basically when you started off, you had huge shoes to fill in. Do you do you think that you ever came out of her shadow or was it always Malka Pukhraj's daughter? I mean, I know you created a huge name for yourself and you have an identification of your own, but back then, was it always? No, no, of course. Oh. Even today, it's only, I'm only known as Malika Pukhraj's daughter and everything else came secondary. My primary introduction has been being her daughter, which was a uh, I would say a huge uh, benefit for me and my career because uh, people had uh, already been introduced to her music and uh, it was uh, for the older people who knew my mother and had heard her singing, it was uh, uh, great to be able to compare her daughter with her and uh, uh, listen to the same music that she had been singing Mm -hmm. Because I sang a lot of my mother's old songs. Yeah. So the older generation enjoyed that part. And uh, I was blessed to uh, have that contact and that inroad into people's hearts and minds vis-a-vis -vis my mother. I know you sang some of them with her, you know, one of them. Also uh, with her. Yeah. And also the songs that she had recorded in the 1940s, right. I recorded them in the 80s, again, to bring them to the public uh, uh, view and for them to listen to those songs, which were probably not even heard anymore since they had, you know, right. 40 years earlier, nobody listened to them. So did it, how did it impact your relationship with your mother? Uh, did it well, sour it, in any way? Or were you just grateful, like you mentioned, that you had that context when no, you started singing? I mean, I was a child of 12. I was a child of 12 when I started singing. And music is a very rigid discipline if you want to learn it. Right. Singing is easy, but if learning music is very tough. So for me, it was painful to go to school and come back and then have to practice music. And my Tad would be there and I would be learning with him and I would be tired. So it was painful at that time. It was not enjoyable at all. Uh, people presume that, you know, singing is just like you stand in the bathroom and sing and singing comes that easily to you. It doesn't. There's a lot of hard work involved. Right. So I had to work hard as a youngster and that obviously did not go down well with me. And uh, I think uh, my mother at that time was more of a teacher and a tutor uh, than a mother because she she had very high standards and she did not allow any uh, thing less than perfect. So I would have to sing or practice or recordings when that started. Uh, they had to be absolutely perfect according to her high standards. Mm -hmm. And her high standards were maintained in life, in society, in her personal uh, behavior, in her uh, personality, in her character. And she expected us to be the same. But of course, we were not, we did not have the kind of uh, 
uh, strength and uh, uh, willpower that she had. But yes, she was more of a tutor at that time and then a mother. So and and you weren't you weren't just a singer. I mean, I I uh, I certainly mean it by no don't take it lightly. But you are also a career woman. So and you did a, a lot of professional, tough professional studying. You know, you're you were a qualified attorney. You went to law school. So how did that work out with such a demanding, like you just explained? singing career and then sing, lear, you know, learning the art of singing. That must have been very, very tough growing up because I'm assuming that uh, the attorney part was what you wanted to be. And then the singing part was to, you know, continue your mother's legacy. Uh, well, when I started singing, I was 12. And by the age of 14, I was appearing on television. And that kept on going till I went to law college. And uh, the law college in Pakistan comprised of 3,000 boys and 12 girls. Wow. So it was um, not suitable for me at that time to be appearing on television as well as coming for my law classes. So I stopped singing for a couple of years while I was uh, in law college. And uh, then I resumed singing after I was married and after I had had my daughter, Kiran. And uh, there was a gap of a few years in which all this happened. But uh, earlier than that, I never really felt there was, you see, at that time, there was not much to do. We did not have social media. We did not have cell phones. We did not have computers. We did not have anything except TV. And that also was for three hours a day. So there was a lot of time. And my mother was one of those who believed that a child should not have any free time to just be sitting around. So she enrolled me in art classes, painting classes, she in, uh, got me a sitar teacher and I learned the sitar and I was learning singing also. The only difference was that since I was not a professional singer, by that I mean I did not have to be running to the studios for recordings or I did not have to be singing in people's homes or giving concerts. It was up to us or me or my mother mm. to perform when and where. So mostly for me, it was television. I was just performing on PTV and not nowhere else. So on PTV, I would, or she would pick and choose. And when, uh, you know, there was a program or a, uh, or a music show or something, then she would decide if it was worth going to worth and time. worth recording. Yeah. But if I had been a professional singer, meaning thereby that my livelihood depended on mm. singing, then I would not have had time. But this way, I had a more uh, uh, relaxed attitude to singing or to music. And I was able to put in a lot more activities. And uh, uh, that's how it, it was easy. I, I did not have a tough time at all. <clears throat> you know, what you just mentioned um, if, uh, about limited TV time, if you tell kids uh, from today about having only three hours of TV, <laughs> I'm sure they'd be shocked to death. But anyways, going I on know. from what you mentioned um, about it, TV being your only medium for um, singing, I was just going to ask... Entertainment. If, yes. Uh, so um, I was just going to ask you about... Um, I know you you got a lot of um, offers for playback singing for um, uh, movies, and I think you you got a few or quite a few uh, chances to participate as an actress in movies too. That's something that you never pursued. Was it just because of what, how they were per, uh, uh, perceived socially, or was it just something that you weren't interested in at all? No, I mean. I came into performing music. So there was no reason for me to branch out into acting or into any other field 
my field was music and singing. It was not necessary for me to do everything that there was in the performing arts. And uh, the question never arose. Of course, I mean, people kept asking and uh, they just would, would ask, but there was never any uh, uh, any thought in my mind of uh, even uh, thinking about it or going for it or not at all. And uh, had I even been inclined, there was no question of it vis-a-vis -vis my family again. And uh, the fact that I was appearing on television and I was singing was enough, more than enough. Okay, so it was mostly by choice that that's not something that you wanted to pursue at all. No, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. I mean, so, I could have, uh, part, I could have been in uh, on uh, TV in uh, so many uh, plays. They, I was asked for that too, but I think a person should stick to the field they know best. There are very few people who can do justice to both, and I certainly did not want to look like a fool. Uh, by acting and failing miserably and uh, uh, then uh, even losing sight of my music. Okay. So you've actually fulfilled a lot of roles in an excellent fashion. You know, you're, you're a mother to two um, children and they have done so well in life, mashallah. They're very highly qualified professionals. And my understanding is that they're both currently in US. So... How did that impact everything else? Were you able to dedicate time just to their upbringing, appraising, and uh, and still manage a full demanding career? Again, as I said, the career was not so demanding because I had a choice. Okay, I would do occasional television. I was not there all the time, but I uh, I had my children, my son, and my daughter. And uh, I mean, if I did even do something on television, it would be maybe two days of work or uh, six days of rehearsals and one day of recording. It wasn't too much. Okay. And I spent a lot of time with them and uh, uh, we were uh, able to be together without no, no problems with that either. And uh, my daughter lives in the US, but my son lives in Muscat, Oman. Oh. And they are both they are both attorneys, and uh, I am currently in uh, the U.S. Yes. because of my daughter. So your your uh, your son and daughter did obviously follow the the family legacy of law. Um, yes. their, their father and mother both being uh, attorneys. Yes. But did yes. you ever um, feel the need to carry on the or pass on the singing tradition or the singing part of the family to your daughter or your son? Or did you even try? You know, uh, as I said, when I was a child and I had to, um, it was painful, as I said, to rehearse and to sing and to learn. So I did ask my children if they were interested. And uh, they both said, no, we are not interested. Okay. And uh, they did not, not learn. But now they say I should have forced them. But I did not have the kind of willpower and the kind of uh, uh, dominance that my mother had on me. I did not have that with them. And I, uh, I said, fine, if you're not interested, that's okay. So uh, I wish it had happened, but it didn't. So you were you were a more liberal mother and kind of oh left yes them absolutely pursue their interests instead of trying to force anything just yes. for yes. family legacy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so over the years, um, I know um, I I don't know uh, how much involved you are um, with current Pakistani music um, outlook and scene, but do you think our music? has transitioned appropriately over the years since you've been singing or is it just not music anymore because i hear a lot of people from yesteryears saying that what they hear today is just noise and it's not the true representation of music you being associated with it for so long coming from a family that was a musical family what do you think you know i think Music is what people like to hear. It is not for me to judge. I may not go for it personally, but 
if there are people who are willing to listen to that noise, as you call it, that's fine. That's music. And as far as transitioning con is concerned, of course, there had to be a transition. Nothing can be static. And as we have gone into uh, you know, the age of the internet, our children in Pakistan are, are listening to music worldwide. It's not just confined to Pakistan. Correct. So obviously Pakistani music had to keep up with the whole world. Mm -hmm. And if there is more instrument in it or more drumming in it or more beat in it, well, so be it. Traditional music is there and there are listeners who like traditional music. And then we do have singers like Abida Parveen, who is still performing wonderfully. Right. Yeah. And uh, we have uh, Shafkat uh, Amanat, who does a great job, Hamid Ali Khan. So we do have those singers. And if anybody is interested in ghazal or uh, classical music, they listen to them. So it's a matter of personal choice. Music cannot be really confined to an era or an age. It has to transition and move on to what the rest of the world is doing. So that's how I feel. And I enjoy listening to them. I uh, I love listening to um, Ali Sethi, Ali Zafar, as I said. Um, Sajad Ali is one of my favorite singers. And uh, of course, Mehdi Hassan, uh, yeah. Farida Khanam, Noor Jahan. These are legends. These are people who are born once in a lifetime, I would say, or maybe even more. So there cannot be another one like them. True. But uh, yeah, music can just move and uh, with the times it has to move like so everything else. Do, do you think uh, right now there's, like you mentioned earlier on in our conversation that you brought back the songs that your mother had sung back in 1940s to the to the newer generation and they could relate it to it more mm -hmm. and you know they could actually enjoy that music and get the sense of it do you think there's room for that again or oh, do you it's think happening all the time yeah that's exactly what coke studio has done yeah they brought old songs with new instruments and introduced them to the public and they are hugely popular and i do not see much new music coming in but old music has been renewed and revived old songs have been uh, uh, given a new face and they are extremely popular and they're doing really well. I think that's a great idea that they are uh, uh, bringing that wonderful music back into now. So, so you think that the newer generation of singers is actually doing a, uh, a good job of reviving the old cultural music of Pakistan with the new rendition that would make it more attractive to the, to yes, the yes, to our new younger generation and makes it more contemporary for people who are yes. more into instrumentation. And music. Okay, that's, that's absolutely. Good I, I am thrilled that the younger generation who had never heard those film songs or those ghazals have a chance now. They are being reintroduced to that music. And uh, that is wonderful that our children get to hear good music that has been produced in Pakistan maybe ages ago and it is still being heard. That, that's a good thing. Uh, so it seems like we've done well on the music front, but I was um, listening to one of your pre previous interviews and uh, one of the comments you made about you know, Pakistan itself was that at this point uh, in time, you would not encourage any of your children to go back and settle in Pakistan, you know, because obviously, first of all, they've been here for so long, it would just be hard for them to establish themselves over there and, and adjust to whatever um, happens in Pakistan. But also because Pakistan at this point is doing so poorly that it's just not advisable for someone to uproot themselves and go back to somewhere where where you know there there's there there are a lot of struggles and in fact difficulties in every aspect of life so and and you know you were brought up in Pakistan you lived there for for a very long time how does that make you feel it makes me sick to the core 
And I absolutely love my country. Yes. Love my city, Lahore. And uh, my whole life has been spent there. Yeah. And uh, as far as I can remember, I have only heard that this is a very bad stage. This has never happened before. This is a horrible state of affairs. <clears throat> and then next time again, oh, this is even worse than before. And the third time, oh my God, we've never had things so bad. Yeah. It's been going on since I was a child. But somehow our country has survived. And uh, I'm hopeful things will improve. Um, that's all we can do. We can only hope and pray. Uh, but uh, yes, things are tough. Things are very bad. And uh, my main concern is that uh, the poor are suffering a lot because uh, the kind of inflation we have has literally never happened before. I mean, I go back from here after five or six months or five, four months and the prices have doubled. Yeah. So it's unthinkable. I cannot even imagine what food they can buy. What are they eating? Because the basics like atta, chini, tail, dale, chawal are so highly priced that I don't think they can afford even one meal a day. So I personally think the greatest charity would be to contribute to some place, some charity organization that gives free food to the poor people. Right. And I see, uh, you know, there are several wonderful people who are doing this. And uh, during Ramzan, I would see that there would be a line of people, like 100 people standing in line waiting to get iftari from there. At First, in like few years ago, there would be people who were on bicycles. This time I saw that there were people who were on motorcycles. So even those who have motorcycles would stand in line for an hour to be able to get iftari. Can you imagine what yeah. those people go through? So they are suffering a lot too. And uh, I I don't know what, what is going to happen. And that makes, uh, you know, people like us, people like you, people like your children who've been here and who are trying to bring out a positive image of Pakistan, make our generation, next generation, our children be proud of Pakistan, interested in Pakistan, you know, maybe not going back and settling there, but at least you know, being uh, being able to identify with Pakistan yeah. and Pakistani is so difficult because with every passing day, things are deteriorating. We have we have, like I said, like I, I preface today's conversation by by saying that, and 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 you kind of alluded to it that every time we say, oh, things are going to get better, it's never been this bad. But it almost seems like this time around, it's never been this bad. There's not a single aspect that you can look at and be like, hey, we're doing so well over here. And, you know, maybe that is something to focus on and look forward to. So it's it's a very sad situation, not only for people in Pakistan, but also people, the, the diaspora here and yeah. the immigrants that... I you know, totally... Yeah, it, it's like, it seems like we're in a state of total despair. We are. I would hate to end at this note. So is there anything that you would like to say to our newer generation, to diaspora, to the music community out there, to um, you know, a message to pass? Well, my, my message would always be that your children must not lose contact with Pakistan and uh, they must not feel ashamed at being called Pakistani. Uh, it is in us to inculcate pride of the language, Urdu. We must inculcate pride in our culture. It doesn't matter what Pakistan is going through. We have to make sure that our children don't lose touch with their own identity. We will never belong to 
the US. We will never be Americans. No. We will always be outsiders. We'll never so be Gore. No. So it's very, very important that they keep in touch with their identity and uh, music, of course. And now that we have all this wonderful, uh, like pop music, it's so easy. You just, you know, put the TV on, put some uh, nice music and let them feel proud of it. Like I saw uh, my grandchildren uh, uh, saw Ms. Marvel and we were so delighted because there was this girl who was Pakistani and who was saying Bismillah and Assalamu Alaikum. And uh, they felt really recognized that there was some, some uh, film or some show that represented them. So things like that must be done and must be made to happen for the children. Like, you know, like I'm sure you people have Eid uh, celebrations oh, yeah. and things yes. like that. We always try when I'm here on Eid. Yes. We always try and have a party, invite our friends over, my daughter's friends, call them over, have a meal and give Eidi to the children because nothing makes you more happy than getting cash. <laughs> so we get a lot of $1 notes and make a stack of them and give them uh, one each one of us, even the guests who come. So they look forward to Eid. Now yeah. it's become an event in their lives. Otherwise, it's just Christmas. So of course, celebrate Christmas as well. Celebrate everything. Thanksgiving yeah. is great. Do everything. But do not lose touch with Urdu, with uh, Eid, with our festivals, whatever we have. So uh, dress up your children in Pakistani clothes once in a while. Let them know what it feels like. So that is my message. That, that is great. And, uh, you know, the, um, we don't focus on it as much. But like you said, the entertainment media, music. Yes songs, TV shows, they can all serve as a line of communication, as a line of connection between the diaspora here and the culture, Pakistani culture, Pakistani home, and maintaining all those little traditions, you know, which were yeah. just a part of our life growing up. Right. Uh, like you mentioned, Eid, Eid, that was not something that we had to think about or plan about that just came naturally to us growing up we mm -hmm. should try to emulate at least those traditions over yeah. here for our children for our next generation to keep them connected Beautiful. so who is tara sayed a great mom a great singer or uh, a professional woman professional not at all okay i would say an okay mom and an okay singer <laughs> I think you're being that. I think you're being too modest on both of those counts. No, you've no, I'm being admirable. Admirable. You've but, been uh, uh, done an admirable admirable job of no, all no, that just yeah. happened on its own. They were good children, they turned out well, and uh, it was all Allah's mehrbani. Allah ka shukar hai. Yeah, I'm blessed with the two most wonderful, amazing children, and their spouses are like you know, more children for me. So I have four amazing children and I have four adorable grandchildren. So yeah. I am the luckiest woman in the world. That's that's incredible. That's beautiful. And may Allah bless them all. Thank you. Would you um, one share of your song? I know you're just recovering from a call, so I'm not going to ask you to sing it. If you could just you know just just say it out for us that would be a, a beautiful finish to this amazing conversation I, you put me on the spot i can't remember any song right now but I uh, that ahmed faraz is yalam shock uh -huh. i'll just hum a little bit oh that'll be amazing thank you so much yalam shock ka देखा न जाए वो बुत है या खुदा देखा न जाए ये आलम शौक का देखा न जाए Thank you so much. I'm sure this is going to bring back memories to a lot of people and a lot of people are going to google it, youtube it and listen uh -huh. to it.
Okay. Thank you. It was a pleasure Thank talking you. to you. I'm uh, hopefully if you ever visit New York, New Jersey, maybe I'll get a chance to meet you in person. But oh, in absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. And uh, have a great rest of the evening. Thank you. Lovely to meet you. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you.